Although I know it's super tempting to just jump right in and start playing all the latest AAA titles with your freshly built and hopefully aesthetic AF gaming PC, I would personally recommend just holding off for a few more minutes and really benchmark and dial in the PC. That way you know it's in tip top shape and you can see how the PC performs over time to see if it degrades at all. No matter how much money you spent on your freshly built gaming PC or what kind of hardware is in there, it's really important to properly benchmark it for several reasons. And this includes whether or not you even overclocked it. This is also super important if you bought a pre-built PC so you can ensure that you're getting the correct performance or also if you bought some used hardware and you want to verify that you're getting the full potential out of that hardware. Benchmarking is also great for isolating any potential issues on a single PC component and to verify stability with overclocks for things like your CPU, GPU, or even just your RAM's XMP setting. No matter what boat you're in, I got you covered and I'm also going to show you how to do all of this for free. While I showcase my favorite benchmarks and some tips and tricks on how to do everything, we'll also be taking a look at this freshly built monster PC that I just assembled and huge thanks to NZXT and Intel for the hookup of these parts. We'll talk about every single part inside of here in just a second, but before doing anything, I would highly recommend you install our first piece of software, which is MSI Afterburner, because you'll need this for pretty much every step along the way. I'll have links to all of these software options and the PC components for our testing rig down in the description, but the reason why MSI Afterburner is important is because it allows us to overlay any specific metric that we want for our system over top of whatever we're running and this is super useful when benchmarking to see things like our CPU and GPU's utilizations and temperatures. MSI Afterburner also allows you to overclock your graphics card and it's the most popular software to do that. And you can use any brand of graphics card, by the way, not just MSI ones, but today's video isn't about overclocking. So we'll save that for next time. Once Afterburner is installed, you can definitely find some proper setup guides on how to configure everything on an in-depth level. But basically all we do is typically set our hotkeys for hiding and displaying the overlay as well as starting and stopping the benchmark. And then for things to monitor, we usually only turn on the CPU and GPU utilizations, CPU and GPU temperature, temperatures and also the RAM usage as well. There are a plethora of other options to choose from, but this is a good start and it'll allow us to instantly see those stats while we run the other benchmarks in our list today. Using HW Monitor is also another great option as well, or you can even use both. Instead of an overlay, HW Monitor can run on a secondary monitor and it's a really simple and clean interface for you to show and hide exactly what information you want to see. Now that we're all prepped and ready to go, I first want to talk about some of the other parts that we'll be using in our testing break today. And as you can see, this is the big and brand new NZXT H7 flow case. And I think for one of the very rare occurrences in our community, when I think we can literally all agree that this was an NZXT case option that we all really wanted. Over the years, we all know how clean and sleek NZXT cases are. And I personally love them despite the lack of airflow, but they have finally given into our demands and not just released the H510 flow, which I personally really, really like, but now also the bigger H7 flow model. And this thing is just a beast. Not only is it still rocking a super clean aesthetic, just like always, but it's also very on brand with the super easy cable management routing portions in the back, a ton of easy to remove dust covers to keep it nice and clean. And Gamers Nexus also did in-depth testing and the airflow is actually quite good. I would highly recommend watching his dedicated review video, by the way. When you use an all white case like this, you have to always properly match it with an equally all white and aesthetic AF motherboard. And NZXT always comes in super clutch in this department, especially with their brand new N7 Z690. This is easily the best looking motherboard on the market like all NZXT. XT motherboards are, and this will allow us to take advantage of Intel's latest 12th generation CPUs. And the one we're using today is the 12700K, and it's actually my first 12th gen i7 chip. So congrats to me for finally testing out something above the 12600K. Now, before drooling over the 12700K, which I certainly want to do, now that we're at the CPU portion of this build, it's important to properly benchmark this component specifically. And there's one magical way that you can do that. Cinebench R23 is my best recommendation for a CPU software testing solution. And although there are definitely Definitely plenty of other options to choose from. This tried and true program has worked great over the last decade or so, and it's super easy to download and start using right away. You can download this newer R23 option directly from their website. No more having to get R20 from the Microsoft store anymore, thank goodness. And you can literally just click run once it's installed and it'll start rendering and print out a score. There's also some minimum timed options if you want to stress test it. But honestly, I found that you'll probably discover an issue if you have one during the first or second runs anyway. So no huge reason to run this for longer than that in my 
my opinion. While you're running this, I would keep an eye out for MSI Afterburner and HW Monitor to make sure that the CPU utilization is going to 100%, and then I would also write down and record not just the score you get, but also the CPU max temperature. Writing this down and saving this information is actually really important because then six months or 12 months from now, you can run that same exact test, and if those temperatures are creeping a little higher, that could indicate that you have to repaste the CPU or maybe you have a potential issue. This concept of measuring now and then a year from now can apply to any of the other benchmarks that we're running today as well. So here's the score that we got for our brand new 12700K. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this is an absolute beast of a CPU. With eight performance cores, four efficiency cores, and 20 total threads turboing up to five gigahertz, this is one of the most dominating options on the market right now for consumers. And honestly, I think I might steal this CPU to use in my new personal system here at the studio. I've explained this several times already, but these new 12th gen Intel CPUs are great for not just gaming, but also multitasking without sacrificing any performance because they can utilize the much beefier performance cores when doing your main work, such as streaming, gaming, or video editing. And then those efficiency cores can handle all of the lesser demanding tasks that keep the PC up and running and also things like Discord. And that way you aren't lowering the performance of the things that actually matter. During peak load times, Intel Turbo Boost Max technology automatically identifies the best performing performance cores, which lifts your FPS numbers. That way your game doesn't suffer, stutter, or tear. And seriously, thank you again for the hookup here by NZXT and Intel. But now that the CPU is properly covered and benchmarked, let's move on to the RAM, and here's where people can be on one side of the fence or the other. The kit we're using today is the 2x16GB Trident Royals, and they're clocked at a solid 3600 megahertz. The reason why the community could be a little bit divided on this one is because honestly, stress testing your RAM isn't super important, but sometimes it could definitely be worth doing. If you're just gonna be turning on XMP and you're using a kit that's 3200 megahertz or below, you honestly don't need to stability test it, in my opinion. That will typically just work right out of the box. But if you wanna be sure, or if you're manually overclocking it yourself, then picking up a piece of software like Memtest would definitely be a great option. This test also takes a really long time to run, and it's not even super easy to set up, as I think you need to boot it off a USB stick, and those are some obvious downsides of it, but feel free to give this one a run if you do wanna properly test out your RAM kit. But now next up, we have our graphics card, and the one that we're using today is the NVIDIA Founders Edition RTX 3070 Ti, and this is a beautiful looking card that I'm super excited about. Like I said, I might just steal this entire PC for my own personal build because my builds both at home and at the studio don't beat the 12700K and RTX 3070 Ti combo. But even if you're running an ultra budget build with something like a GTX 1650 in it, it's still important to not neglect benchmarking this GPU. There's a ton of options for you to select here. And one that you will often see people recommend is Unigen's Heaven benchmark. But honestly, I really can't figure out why people are still recommending it. Heaven is a great option for most people. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it per se, but this one released all the way back in 2009, AKA when Barack Obama first became the president and had a full head of black hair, and Unigen has not released just one software update, but two since then. Their newest GPU benchmark is called Superposition, and I would recommend you check this one out if you've only been using Heaven in the past. I'm honestly pretty sure that the main reason why people are still using Heaven is because some older YouTubers and more popular YouTubers are still recommending it, and that's probably because they haven't been researching what's available on the market, and that's honestly probably the same reason why these same YouTubers are building some gaming PC build guides that were outdated like three years ago. The one thing I really like about Superposition is not only are they able to test newer technologies, but it's also easier to set up as there's some basic presets for you to choose from instead of custom by default like Heaven does. And I also really like the built-in screenshotting function at the end. You can just click the camera icon and it'll automatically save this picture and here are the results that we got for our system today. And not only do you get the actual benchmarking score, but here you can also see all the other important information like your GPU utilization, FPS numbers, benchmarking settings, GPU driver versions, and even the temperatures, which is literally everything that you need. You can easily just create a folder of all your benchmarks and refer back to them whenever you want to test an overclock, test your PC's performance over time, etc. The one downfall with Superposition, however, is that you have to pay for an upgraded version if you want an endless loop. But just like I said with Cinebench, you're most likely going to find any errors during that first or second run unless you're doing some serious overclocking. So I wouldn't really worry about it. And this free version is usually perfectly fine for most people. And moving on through the build here, there's one more component that I like to specifically benchmark real quickly before we test the overall stability and performance of the entire build together. And that's the SSD. And you can use something free and quick like Crystal Disk Mark. This isn't 100% necessary, but honestly, I would do this if this was your own personal system. This quick benchmark will allow you to see exactly what read and write speeds you're getting. And you can quickly compare that to what's advertised to make sure that you're actually getting the right speeds. This test is also really great for beginners because beginners might put that SSD into the wrong slot. Some motherboards, especially the more budget ones might have an X2 versus an X4 slot or maybe a PCI 
PCIe Gen 3 versus a Gen 4 slot, these results will expose if that beginner actually plugged it into the right spot or not. But now that all of the individual components that I think are necessary to benchmark are covered, here's the full parts list of everything else inside of our build. I actually didn't choose the parts for these and NZXT did for the most part, but you know it was your boy making some of these smaller decisions with the easy DIY cable extensions per usual. But we aren't done with the benchmarks just yet. Now that all of the individual components are benchmarked to isolate any potential issues, it's now time to benchmark and monitor the overall performance of the entire system as a whole. So far up until this point, these benchmarks have really only stressed one individual component at a time, so we'll now have to use something like actual game benchmarks or software like 3D Mark's Time Spy to make sure all of the components are properly functioning together and to ensure that we don't have any heating issues as all of the components will be heating up at the same exact time now. For software, the main one that I would recommend, which is pretty popular, is 3D Mark's Time Spy, and 3D Mark has a ton of other options that you can use as well. They do have a free version that you can simply download from Steam, but the paid version, which is what we use over here, does have some more features. The one thing I really love about this is that you can install the entire suite of benchmarks through Steam, and they go on sale quite often, or you can download just the standalone installers yourself through their website, and then you can load that on a USB flash drive or on a NAS so you can easily move it from one PC to the next. After Time Spy runs, it'll shoot out an overall score for you to write down, and then you can also compare this to see how you stacked up against other systems with your exact same specs to make sure that you're getting close to their scores. This is extremely useful for testing out not just your base level performance, but also how much better your system is performing after an overclock, for example, and hopefully your system is towards the best compared to other PCs with your same exact hardware. And then to save the absolute easiest benchmarking method for the very end, you can just benchmark your system with any game that has a built-in benchmarking tool, and I would highly recommend that you pick some of these titles up that have one. Games like Horizon Zero Dawn, Grand Theft Auto V, Forza Horizon 5, or any of the Assassin's Creed games are usually all great options for this. It's also important to always test a few games because some utilize the CPU more than the GPU and vice versa, some favor Nvidia or AMD, and it's also just a good excuse to pick up games during the Steam sales that you don't necessarily want to play, but you want to have them for the built-in benchmarks. Again though, for every type of benchmark that I listed out today, make sure you're writing down or saving your results and monitoring the temperatures. That way over time you can run the same exact test again and see if your system is performing any better or worse, and you can see if the temperatures are changing at all, which is really valuable information. Be sure to let me know down in the comment section what other benchmarks you're consistently using, and also feel free to click the video that's on the screen now if you haven't even built your own PC yet and you're just looking for some extra tips on how to do that.